and amazing feats of skill and ingenuity are performed. But no matter how hard the medical personnel try, they cannot always work a miracle. This story is not a recreation. It's a very real look at one victim brought to Erlanger Medical Center in Chattanooga, Tennessee on October 2nd, 1993. 5.03 p.m. p.m. The 25-year-old victim, Russell Cope, arrives at the hospital. Among those who treated him at the scene was Hamilton County paramedic Dave Klingman. The motorcycle that evidently was flipped end over end several times down an embankment off a road. He was alert and conscious, but he asked a lot of repetitive questions, which kind of suggest he may have had some kind of a head injury. He probably traveled 20, 30 feet past the bike. When the accident occurred, Russell had been riding motorcycles on a country road with his uncle, Gary Brooks. I was probably doing 75 or 80, just trying to catch him. I saw him go around the curve, and then when I went around the curve, you know, he was nowhere in sight. Ran down, and he wasn't moving. He was just gasping for air. Chief Trauma Surgical Resident Roger Land heads up the team treating the victim. Since he had a motorcycle accident, which means he was actually thrown from his vehicle, uh, he definitely needed the cervical spine evaluated. He's moving his arms and everything. His arms, no yeah. legs. I've not seen him move his legs at all. He may have a big pulmonary confusion. We also noticed upon looking at his chest X-ray that his left lung field appeared to be completely whited out. He's got a pulmonary confusion, if not a left hemothorax. There was a strong chance he could have a significant amount of blood in his left chest. He's got something that ain't quite right on that chest X-ray. You can see a fracture with fragment into the spinal canal, which is here in an outward fashion with some canal compromise. At this time, he does not have any neurologic function below this level, and chances of him having any neurologic function below this level in the future are very little. You know, the statistics say only 15% of motorcycle accident victims ever walk away safely from the accident. Unfortunately, this gentleman's luck ran out tonight. Mr. Cope. Yes, sir. Dr. Land, one of the senior surgery residents here. You're his uh, father. Well, when he when he uh, wrecked his motorbike, uh, he caused a fracture in his back. Okay, and when he came in, he was complaining of not being able to feel anything in his feet. It doesn't look like there's a good chance he's going to get any function at all back. But uh, he's he's lucky to be with us. Okay, good. he did make it through the accident. He's going to need a lot of support from us and from family uh, to get through this thing in the future. Okay, good. All right, but uh, he's with us. Good. Okay, and he's going to be Let with us. Go. Okay, all right. We'll get back here and finish taking care the of the victim's okay. parents, Roy and Darlene Cope, have come to be with their son. He's going to be a little confused, okay, but still, I just want to operate on him a lot right now, okay? Russell. Russell. Talk to me. Okay? Open your eyes and talk to me. You had a wreck. You did, baby. First thing he said to me when he saved me, Dave, will you pray for me? I prayed with him. Now thank God that he's alive. Russell? Hi. Daddy's here. The family support is very important in situations like this. 
We know he's going to go through a grieving period, a period of depression, which is understandable, but we hope that he will see the positive sides, that he can rehabilitate himself into a wheelchair and have a job, drive a car, and have a future. You need your mm -hmm. The helmet saved his life. He may be paralyzed, but he could be dead. He could be gone. I could no longer have a son. You don't tell us anything. Life is precious. Parents always need to be there for their children. We do, Russell. We care for you. You can love someone greatly, never express it or show it, and maybe the next day they're gone. A week has passed. Russell continues to gain strength. His brother, Junior, has visited him every day. We always did things together. It's like my best friend. I thought I was going to lose him. But I haven't. It's hard. He just slowed down a little bit. That's why you got scar tissue. That's my fishing buddy. And I said, boy, you got to get well. We got to go. He gets in his wheelchair. And he's able to. I'm going to stick a rod in his hand and say, go, throw it, boy. Let me see how far you can throw it. Ten months have passed since Russell Cope's accident. It was really hard for me. When I woke up, you know, and found out that I'd be paralyzed, and my first thought was, you know, why didn't I die? Yeah. The happiest moments to me are being able to go fishing with my brother. Catch the big one. Junior and a couple of friends of theirs built him the platform and made the ramps for him to get into that boat. If you want to fish, boy, you're going to fish. That's basically what they said to him. We'll find a way. And they did. So often it's easy to give up and quit when you ain't able to do the things you once were able to do. And he's come a long way since the accident. A lot further than most would give him credit for. Well, speed is what caused the accident, and I enjoyed the bikes, but, you know, you need to respect them, and people need to respect them more than I did. If you don't have that respect, you know, the same thing can happen to you. Some people steal, they cheat and lie. Before the accident, you know, if I wanted to do something, do it bad enough, I done it. I feel the same way now. You know? And there's there's things I want to do that you know there's nobody out there gonna tell me I can't do. Anybody can tell me I can't do something, but you know, if I don't go out and try, that may be so. And do my soul. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Hey, that was.